this week in Jamaica now. After years and years of tax increases, the time has come to return money, taxpayers' money to the people. Santa Clark, the finance minister, announces $14 billion stimulus package as he opens the budget debate. And some student loan borrowers will be getting rate cuts. The by-election blunder, why the Prime Minister had to change the date for the Portland Eastern polls. It was a genuine oversight. Fake Jamaican dentist charged in the Bahamas. 24 Uchens gang members on trial in Kingston's home circuit court. Judge revokes bail for pastor after DNA tests proves he is the father of a child with a 12-year-old girl. And... Happy to be alive, but sad at the same time for my family members. Scared. It was a just whole influx of emotion. We're talking with Jamaican Olympian Kamoy Campbell a month after he collapsed in New York when his heart stopped. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. Santa Clark, it was the Gleaner headline on Friday morning, a day after the finance minister Dr. Nigel Clark announced $14 billion in givebacks. Clark, flanked by former finance minister Audley Shaw and Prime Minister Andrew Holness, made the announcements on Thursday as he opened the 2019 budget debates. After years and years of tax increases, the time has come to return money, taxpayers' money to the people. He said distortionary taxes were being abolished and the government was imposing a flat rate of $5,000 for ad valorem stamp duty. So when you hear that interest rates are moving down and yours not moving and some other institution offers you a better rate, phase the financial institution out. The government will not stand in your way. The minimum business tax of $60,000 a year was also being stripped. And more than 3,500 small businesses will no longer have to pay GCT. This is because the government is increasing the GCT threshold from $3 million a year to $10 million a year. And the finance minister has also announced rate cuts of two percentage points for some borrowers of the Students Loan Bureau. Effective immediately, eligible borrowers in good standing with the SLB will be entitled to a reduction in their interest rates of two percentage points. For new loans, payments will first be made to the most outstanding balance as opposed to interest and penalties. There will be a 10% loan balance cut for borrowers employed to charities. And in the new fiscal year, the government will provide grant support of $3 billion to the SLB. The Attorney General Marlene Malahu Fort has described as a genuine oversight the Portland Eastern by-election announcement blunder by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. At a Jamaica Labour Party rally in Port Antonio Square last Friday, the Prime Minister announced nomination day as March 8 and the by-election day as March 25. The office of the Prime Minister later issued a statement saying the dates were being changed because nomination day would not have been five clear days after its announcement as the representation of the People Act stipulates that Ash Wednesday being a public holiday should have been excluded. Malahu Ford said the error was due to a shift in the original day that the Prime Minister was scheduled to announce the by-election. It was a genuine oversight in respect of Ash Wednesday falling in the middle of the week because the budget process is going on and there were a number of other issues that were taken into account, PEP exam and, and um, market days and a number of things. So it's, it's not a, a, a legal blunder, it was just an oversight that a public holiday fell within the time frame and is an excluded day. Jamaican Olympian Kemoy Campbell said he is determined to return to athletics. A month ago, Campbell was hospitalized for several days after his heart stopped while he was running in New York. He is now home recuperating and doctors are trying to find out the cause of his heart failure. Campbell told the Gleaners Andre Lowe in New York that he was anxious for answers. In the meantime, he is eyeing returning to athletics with marathons once he is cleared to run again. I'm just holding out, resting the best I can, still doing my walks, simple exercises that I can do, and then I'll get back on it as soon as they tell me I can get back on it, if I can get back right. on it. So you have not given up um, the chance or the hope of one day competing again, you haven't? I haven't given up that chance, and I think the marathon would be the ultimate event for me, and if I end up running, I'm probably just going to move straight back to the marathon, not even on the track anymore. Kingston's home circuit court has revoked the bail of the 56-year-old pastor charged with rape and other sexual offenses in relation to a 12-year-old girl. 
A high court judge has also told the pastor that he should give careful consideration to the case against him. It happened after Pastor Kenneth Blake appeared in the Home Circuit Court this week and insisted that his case goes to trial despite the results of two DNA tests. Both tests, one of which was paid for by the pastor, concluded that there was a 99.99% chance that he could not be excluded as the father of the young girl's baby. Blake, who had been on bail since August 2017, was then taken into custody. At the end of the hearing, his attorney, Abel Don Foote, applied for and was granted permission to withdraw from the case. And the trial of 24 alleged members of the Yuchen's gang got underway in Kingston this week. The prosecution is relying on the testimony of a former gang member to convict the 24-member network. On Thursday, the former gang member testified that Chantal Gordon, the girlfriend of reputed gang leader Yuchen's Wilson, hid guns used by gangsters after a robbery in St. Catherine. He also detailed incidents of extortion, rape and gun running involving members of the gang. In the Bahamas, the 27-year-old Jamaican woman arrested for posing as a dentist has pleaded guilty to fraud charges. Santini Carr Wilson, also known as Nicole Wilson, has been charged with using the title of an orthodontist, practicing as a dentist, acquiring property for the proceeds of criminal conduct, and having in her possession $7,000 believed to be the proceeds of criminal conduct. Wilson was said to be operating from an office charging unknowing clients U.S. $510 for services rendered. She has been fined just under $7,000 U.S. and ordered to repay the complainants or face jail time. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at greenerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell and before we go, more from Jamaican Olympian Kemoy Campbell on his fear, his fate, his future. I was dead, so I didn't know what was going on. My memory of that day is actually non-existent. The only thing I remember was talking to one of my friends heading to the um, track meet and I couldn't tell you what happened from there on. In practice a few times I, um, I thought I had exercise induced asthma where I would be working out and obviously it's super cold so I'd be working out and I thought my body was just working extra hard where um, it's working hard to warm itself and also like to push in practice and I'd feel I felt like I couldn't breathe in practice. So I thought it was like a breathing problem. And the Monday, I already scheduled a po an appointment to see like a doctor about my breathing the Monday. And the incident happened the Saturday. I don't know if I could do it again. And <laughs> I say my family, my family means a ton, a lot to me. They mean a lot. And if they think it's gonna put them in a situation where they have to go through all this heartache and pain all over again. I think, I don't know if I might run again because I don't want to see them the same way that I saw them in the hospital.